Hello everyone, Voodoo here, and welcome to my next installment of the five tip series. Now in 10.2, Havoc got a ton of changes to it. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you five tips on how to get the most damage out of your Havoc Demon Hunter following all those changes in 10.2. Before we get to that though, make sure you like the video, comment and subscribe. We've passed 9,000 subs, which is amazing. Also use code Voodoo at checkout at gfuel.com for 20% off. Shout out to them for sponsoring the video. They're an energy supplement company and they taste great. Now that out of the way, let's get on to the first tip for these five tips. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is glaze. Now I've seen a lot of questions and also incorrect statements about the glaze. What am I talking about? It's the tier set. So let's give the tier set a read first because I think a lot of people just need to do this. But the two pieces is what we're talking about here. So Blade Dance automatically triggers Throw Glaive on your primary target for 100% damage and each slash has a 50% chance to Throw Glaive an enemy for 35% damage. I'm not gonna read the four piece, it doesn't matter this section, but essentially what this is saying is two parts. Part one is that every time you push Blade Dance or Death Sweep, if you have a charge of Throw Glaive, it will throw that charge for you automatically. The second part is that every single slash you do, there's a 50% chance to throw a weaker Throw Glaive, and that will happen no matter what. That happens all the time. Now, I've seen in a lot of places, people saying to spend all of your Glaive charges before you use Blade Dance. Do not do that. If someone is telling you to do that, they're either wrong or, well, they are wrong, but they probably just didn't read the tier set properly. So if we go up to this dummy here and I just walk in and I push Blade Dance, watch my throw Glaive charges my weak core here. See that go down. So I'm gonna meta just to reset. And if I do it again, you see it goes down. Now we're gonna wait here until uh, my, my I beam comes back, my death sweep. I'm gonna throw a Glaive and then just use it. It doesn't actually spend one. Now it still does throw one, you can see it happens here still, um, because of the RNG procs, but it doesn't actually throw that 100% Glaive. So, the first trick for the glaives, and this is a pretty simple one, is to just always have a charge of throw glaive every time you death sweep, okay? Every single time, no exceptions. You always want to have this. It's never worth it. It's basically just a free GCD that you don't need to care about. Now, there is something else. If we look at my abilities, we can see that Blade Dance has an 8.5 second cooldown with my current haste levels. This is hasted, so you know it won't be exactly that. Then. Throw Glaive has a 7.6 second recharge. Now I was saying you want one charge of Throw Glaive for every Blade Dance and that's fine, but Blade Dance has a 0.9 second longer cooldown than Throw Glaive. What that means is that outside of your meta where you use two of them, every time you use it, you're going to be slightly desynced from your uh, Blade Dance. So if I use it here, we see that these will come up in roughly the same amount of time. So I don't have to, don't have to worry about it here. These are going to uh, cause us not to over cap. But see here, this is going to over cap before Blade Dance actually comes back. So I'm actually going to spend a charge there to throw a Glaive so that I'm not over capping. And that's the other kind of important thing with Blade Dance and the Glaives, is that if you're going to over cap on a charge of throw Glaive, it's important that you spend it, right? So if you're gonna hit two charges and Blade Dance is nowhere near off cooldown, it's a good idea to just kind of throw that Glaive. Uh, you can see it doesn't happen very often um, because it's only like 0.9 seconds. Obviously it will happen every now and then. Another important thing too is that if you remember Meta's coming up soon, you can just kind of ignore that. So here, I'm actually not going to hard throw a Glaive, even though um, might be correct to do so. I'm over capping there, but Meta's here. So whenever I'm Meta, again, I'm not doing my combo properly, but when I'm Meta, I use all of them, so it doesn't matter, okay? So with Glaives, it's important to always have a charge whenever you Blade Dance, but because of that 0.9 second difference, if you're going to over cap on your Glaive charges and Blade Dance is not off cooldown, it's good to throw them. Now in AOE, Throw Glaive is better than a Chaos Strike, so you're gonna do it anyways. In single target, it's better than a Chaos Strike as well. So that's important to remember. Make sure you're doing that and you should be good to go. All right, so the next thing we're talking about is Inertia. Now Inertia and by extension, a fire inside is a new talent combo, so to speak, that's used in basically all of the builds of Havoc Demon Hunter. Now Inertia is every time you use Unbound Chaos, your next Fell Rush, well, that Fell Rush, uh, increases your damage by 18% for five seconds. And a fire inside basically gives you two immolation aura charges, lets them overlap and gives you a 25% chance to reset immo aura whenever you use it. Now these combine together for very, very powerful burst windows. And that's basically how you wanna think about it. 
I've seen a lot of people thinking about inertia as like an uptime based thing. That's not what it is. That's more of a momentum thing. Inertia is best used in our highest damage windows possible. Now those damage windows are going to be your meta combo, your essence break combo, death sweep, the hunt. And if you're in M plus, something like Glaive Tempest, right? You don't want to just spend these willy nilly. You want to spend them purposefully and with, you know, the proper things. So to do that, you basically just want to use one on an opener and then use them with your death sweeps, have the overlap with the hunt dot, and that's how you do the most damage. We'll do an example opener here, just so I can show you how I've been using it recently without lust and all that stuff. Start off here, do our thing, backflip, do this, hunt in, spell rush, essence break, death sweep, meta, death sweep. So see there, I had inertia up for all of my strong windows, and now I'm just gonna push it and spend the buff so I have it for my death sweep. Death sweep's probably the biggest thing to buff because you get the death sweep damage as well as the damage from your glaives, which is, you know, the best for both worlds here. Now I'm gonna save a charge always for essence break. So we can see here that my essence break has a 15 second cooldown and my immolation aura has a seven second cooldown, which is why I went ahead and just spent a charge. Let's say my immolation aura is gonna come up here. It's gonna come up in like two seconds. Now at this point, Essence break has three seconds. This has 23, so I'm not going to use it. I'm going to hold off. I'm going to wait. And now at this point, I can use it. It's coming back pretty soon. I can use the Fury. I'll backflip, I beam, Bell Rush in, Essence Break, and Death Sweep. And then, you know what? I even fit a Hunt in there. Why not? And then at this point, again, we're going to have another one coming up in just a second here. Now, this one will have a shorter cooldown than my Essence Break window, so I'm going to use it. So at this point, we got a reset, which is really good. So we can actually spend this charge do this and then we actually can spend another charge later. So this is gonna come up before Essence Break again. So we'll spend this one on our next Blade Dance. Now here we're gonna wait. Again, you can see seven seconds is less than 10 seconds. So we're doing good. As long as you have a charge for every single Essence Break window, as I do here, we, gotta, we even got a reset, look at that. So we can spend our reset and we can just kind of backflip I-beam, do the whole thing I was doing before. So. Save a charge for essence break windows, spend the rest on death sweeps. Try and have it overlap with the hunt when you can. If you're playing M plus with Glaive Tempest, just have them overlap. They have pretty similar cooldowns. Um, so you should always have an inertia window for your Glaive Tempest. So next up, we're gonna talk about openers. Now there's a ton of different openers and different things to do depending on like what you have. Do you have meta, do you have essence break, do you have this, do you have that? So we're gonna go over a few of them, all the ones I can think of that are important and just talk about them because I think it's important and people kind of need to know. So I won't have Lust because, you know, I'm just by myself and I didn't have drums. Even then, drums are bad. But I'll do a Lusted and Unlusted opener for uh, for you guys just for ease of use here. So we're gonna start off with just our classic meta combo on pull. Now the one on pull is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna be Vengeful retreating a lot later than normal um, because we'll have inertia from pull. So I'm gonna start off with my uh, Sigil Flame, Immolation Aura, Fell Blade. Then we're going to I Beam, Hunt In, Fell Rush, Essence Break, Backflip, Death Sweep, Meta, Death Sweep. Now that is going to be the best way. And then you, you want to I Beam, of course. That's gonna be the best way. Now, of course, I uh, didn't have inertia for all of the things there because, um, you know, no lust and whatever. But generally speaking, whenever you're on pull, that's the best way to do. Um, if you get a reset, you can spend your resets until you have none. Of course, uh, Havoc only has like a 25% chance now, so it's nothing that crazy. And then if you have Lust as well, you can actually delay the hunt to be after your first um, Fell Rush. I'm doing it that way because I don't have Lust. But if you do have Lust, then you can fit the hunt into the inertia window and get even more damage that way. So that would just be I Beam, Fell Rush, Hunt, Essence Break yada 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 so that's kind of the thing with lust now we're going to do an essence break combo because it's come back up so the thing to do for essence break is pretty easy you're going to use immolation aura then you're going to backflip and i beam bell rush in essence break death sweep and then just two annihilations and that is uh that's going to be your 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 window which is pretty easy the reason we're doing that is because we have three buffs to overlap we have Initiative, which gives you 10% critical strike chance. We have Demonic, which gives you Demon Form for five seconds after you use I-Beam. We have Furious Gaze, which is whatever. And then we also have Inertia. Now these three things overlap in such a way that we want to get all of them onto the Essence Break and the Death Sweep. And that's kind of how we do that. So Initiative is the weakest. So we, we, we choose to waste the most of that one, right? That's why we do backflip into I-Beam. Followed by that, we have Demonic, which is 
you know, we need to do before we enter it. Demo uh, demon form, or sorry, before we use death sweep, obviously. Then we have the strongest, which is inertia. We use the inertia on our essence break and our death sweep because those hit the hardest. Now with meta, it wouldn't change too much. We're gonna just chill here for 10 seconds while it comes up. Pretty much you're gonna do the exact same thing with meta outside of your opener. Again, your opener will look different than the others because you eventually retreat much later into the combo because again, you have um, initiative up much earlier, but without initiative, like let's say we're in the middle of the, of the pull, you do very similar thing. You'd immolation aura, we'll get just some fury. Backflip, I beam, bell rush, essence break, death sweep, and then you just do meta death sweep instead of the usual uh, annihilation annihilation. So the opener is a bit different, but after that, it's pretty much just immolation aura, ventral retreat plus I beam, bell rush back in, essence break, death sweep, and then you either meta death sweep or you annihilation annihilation. With Glaive Tempest, it's not gonna change too much. Let me just grab Glaive Tempest for you guys here. Ah, uh, Essence Breaks on cooldown. We'll be right back in 12 seconds. So we're in AoE now, and the reason for that is because you never use Glaive Tempest outside of AoE. Even then, I do think Essence Break is also a very viable and valuable alternative. Um, Essence Break is gonna be very similar. The only real difference between the two is that you want to spend both of your Immolation Auras on pull for AoE. So for AoE, it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna schedule Flame, Immolation Aura, Fell Rush through, Immolation Aura, Bell Rush through, Glaive Tempest, I Beam, Backflip, Death Sweep, Meta, Death Sweep, I Beam, and then the Hunt. Now, normally you can hunt before, and it's probably generally a good idea to do so, um, just because you get a lot of CDR from the Glaives. Probably, honestly, goof that up a little bit, but uh, you get the general idea. I'm still a little used to hunting at the end because of uh, last tier. Um, but yeah, it's really nothing too hard. You're basically playing the same thing. Um, a little tip is to make sure you have Immolation Aura um, just kind of popping when you're in the pack, but really you're just spending everything on cooldown, maybe lining up an Immolation Aura with a Glaive Tempest whenever they come up together, but otherwise it's like really brain off. You don't have to do a ton outside of the, uh, the stuff you're already doing in single target. But if you get a single target rotation down, then you will have the AoE rotation down pretty easily. Now there is one small thing. If you're fighting more than, I think it's three targets, uh, Fell Rush is a better damage button than um, Cow Strike is. You know, you want to use Sigil of Flame on cooldown. You want to use Immolation Aura basically as close to cooldown as possible. Um, basically, Cow Strike is your last resort if you can't push anything else. Uh, everything else is like better. So that's kind of it for AoE. Pretty similar to single target, but a little tiny bit different. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about isn't necessarily new to Havoc in 10.2, you know, the rest of it has been, but it's still an important thing. And with a lot of newer players, not newer players, but new to Havoc, right? Rewallers and such, um, experiencing it for the first time, I do want to talk about that, and that is proper movement. So I'm gonna throw a diagram up on the screen and then try and show you in game. Now, I don't know if there's any bigger target dummies. I think this is the biggest one I can think of is in Desire Lore. Um, so it's gonna be hard to perfectly show this. But basically the idea here is you wanna imagine the boss in the middle and a little triangle around him about how to do your movement. Whenever you use a movement ability, the goal of it is to do it and stay in range. If you use the ability and go out of range, you messed up, right? So if the boss is the middle of this triangle, the best thing to do is one of a few things. Now the first one is to go side to side. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Let's say I'm here and I can melee the boss. Am I even in melee range? Okay, I'm in melee range. I fell rush this way and obviously I'm not in melee, melee range anymore because it's too long. But you fell rush through and try to stay in melee range side to side. Another thing, another way is just kind of going diagonally, like around the outside of the triangle, right? So you can go that way, you can go this way and just maintain uptime. The same is true for ventral retreat. You can ventral retreat side to side, Right, to maintain uptime there. Again, this bot, this hitbox is way smaller than a boss would be. You can um, VR like as a triangle, either way, kind of around the boss's hitbox. What you never want to do is basically fell rush away, or you know, ventral retreat away, or just fell rushing away, or or moving away where you're just gone, right? Where you just have no chance of ever actually hitting the target. You never really want to do that. The best way to do it, if you don't have a wall nearby, obviously if you have a wall, we can just go to these dummies. If you have a wall, always fell rush into the wall or VR into the wall, just whenever possible. Now that doesn't happen in raid fights most of the time. You're almost always going to have some kind of 
you know, open space near you in a raid. Uh, in some Mythic Plus pulls, there's walls. I guess actually some raid fights, there's walls, but always use a wall if you can. But otherwise, you want to always go through the boss whenever possible. So Fell Rush, I go right through him and go back out there to show you guys. Ventral Retreat, I go through him and I hit a wall too. So it's like a bit of a bit of two worlds here. So basically, whenever you're playing Havoc, it's important to just think of this triangle, right? Think about how you can move and maintain uptime. If you drop uptime, you're missing A, globals, B, you're missing auto attacks, which is damage and fury gain because of the talent Demon's Blades. So you're missing a lot of stuff when you miss globals by, you know, when you miss uptime like that. So you really never want to do it. So try and think of that triangle and think about how you can fell rush or VR in such a way that you stay on the boss, right? You stay uptime. Now, sometimes it's not possible if you have a really small boss hitbox and you can like do like a thing, like you're fighting here, you take a step out, fell rush back in kind of deal, use your wings to get around, all that kind of stuff. That's a little too advanced for me to cover or a little too kind of free form, but having a lot of movement, we have wings that can cancel momentum. Uh, you can bind those and just kind of cancel momentum with them. So it's important to just think about what you can do as a Havoc Demon Hunter to maintain that uptime while you're moving. So that is going to be it for this next installment of the five tip series. I will probably be doing more of these at some point. I don't know. I need to brainstorm five more things. But if there's anything you want to see done in one of these in a future video, drop a comment below. If there's a question you have, if there's something you want to see me dive into a little deeper, that's what is great for these five tip series. So make sure you drop a comment down there, ask any questions you have. Otherwise, you can join my Discord and ask there or the Havoc Discord and ask around there. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe as well. Help grow the channel. And finally, follow me on Twitch in the description. Become a channel member if you want to support me. It's down there as well. And finally, use code VOODOO at checkout at gfuel.com for a little bit 20% off. Thank you everybody for watching the video. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Five tips. Hope you guys are, are getting better at Havoc, enjoying Havoc, and just enjoying these videos. So uh, this is actually my last video before my little break. So I guess I'll see you guys in the new year. Thank you guys all so much for everything this year. Um, you guys have been awesome. Just the growth the channel's had has been crazy. So thank you all so, so much. And uh, enjoy your holidays. Happy holidays, happy new year. And I will see you guys in 2024. Thank you for everything in 2023. And here's the good things coming in 2024. Have a good one, guys. Big thank you to all of my channel members. Thank you, Fidi Gregori, Andrew Kino, Guillermo Lamas, Joshua O'Connell, Latand, Period, Brad Wisniak, Zuligan, It's Bulk, Magic Man 133, and How Lee. Thank you all so, so much. Your support helps me make the content every week and keeps me going on this channel. Thank you all so, so much. If you want to support me, follow the link in the description to become a channel member. And again, thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.